Hi guys, in today's video, I will be teaching you the linear programming. But what is linear programming? It is an optimization technique where in simplest term, it is choosing the inputs that will result to the best possible outputs or making things the best that they can be. Linear programming is a mathematical method that is used to determine the best possible outcome or solution from a given set of parameters or list. Linear programming shows the relationship between variables by the use of linear equations and linear inequalities. In most cases, the best use for linear programming is looking for the maximum profit an entity could earn and the lowest cost the entity may incur. Linear programming was developed during the World War II in 1937 by Leonid Kantorovich. He used this method to plan the expenditures and reduce the military costs during that period. Now that you have a little background about the linear programming, let's move on on how do we solve for a linear programming problems. Now, here are the steps in solving a linear programming problem. Step 1 is to list the independent variables. This is also called decision variables. These are the variables that directly affects a problem or a situation. They usually tell us what quantity to buy, produce, sell, or to transport. Second step is to list the constraints. They are the restrictions that shape on how you will attain the objective. These constraints should be translated to linear inequalities that we will use later on. Third step is to find the objective and translate it into linear equation. This is the objective function or the things you want to optimize. In linear programming, we either maximize or minimize the objective. Fourth step is to graph the possible region. Remember the constraints in step 2? In this part, you will need to graph these linear inequalities into a graphing calculator software called GeoGebra. This will help you to easily locate for the region and the points that you will need for the fifth and final step. Final step is to find all corner points and substitute it to the objective function. After graphing the constraints, we will look for the most shaded region of the graph. This will provide the points that we will use to substitute in our objective function previously done on step 3 for us to be able to get the most optimized outcome that we need. Since you know all the steps in solving a linear programming problem, let's apply it to a problem. The problem says, a candy manufacturer has 130 pounds of chocolate-covered cherries and 170 pounds of chocolate-covered mints in stock. He decided to sell them in the form of two different mixtures. One mixture will contain half cherries and half mints by weight and will sell for $2 per pound. The other mixture will contain one-third cherries and two-third mints by weight and will sell for $1.25 per pound. How many pounds of each mixture should the candy manufacturer prepare in order to maximize his sales revenue? Step 1 is to list the independent variables. The variables from this problem are 
the weight of two different candies from the mixture. Let X be the first mixture which contain one half of the chocolate covered cherries and one half of the chocolate covered mix with the cost of $2 per pound. And let Y be the second mixture which contain one third of the chocolate covered cherries and two thirds of the chocolate covered mints with the cost of $1.25 per pound. Next is the constraints. The only constraints from the problem are the chocolate covered cherries only have 130 pounds in stock and the chocolate covered mints only have 170 pounds in stock. We need to transform this into linear inequalities so that we could enter this to the graphing calculator software GeoGebra. And the constraints will look like this. 1 half x plus 1 third y is less than or equal 130 represents the chocolate covered cherries which only have 130 pounds in stock. While the other one, 1 half x plus 2 third y is less than or equal 170 represents the chocolate covered mints which only have 170 pounds in stock. While the other two, x and y, is greater than or equal to zero, is an additional formula. Since we are dealing with real-life problem, we don't expect them to have negative value, so we treat them as negativity constraints. Next step is to formulate an objective function. This function will help you to compute for the maximum profit that you can have. The 2x represents the cost of the first mixture, which is $2 per pound, while the 1.25y represents the cost of the second mixture, which is $1.25 per pound, while the z represents the maximum profit that the candy manufacturer can have if he or she found the best mix of products to sell. Next step is to enter the linear inequalities previously done on step 2 to the graphing calculator software GeoGebra. After entering all the linear inequalities we did earlier, here is the overall look of the graph. To clearly understand it, I draw it with the corresponding points that we will use on the fifth and final step. Lastly, since we have four corner points, we will substitute all four of them to our objective function, which is 2x plus 1.25y equal to c and compare their sum with each other. The highest sum will represent the optimal or maximized profit that the candy manufacturer can have and will give him an idea of what mixture of candies he should sell in his shop to boost his profit. The table shows that the largest value of Z is $520 and the corresponding optimal solution is 260 and 0. Thus, the candy manufacturer attains maximum sale of $520 when he produced 260 pounds of mixture A and none of mixture B.